You want to talk about the expat? Yeah, I'll, I'm happy to talk about the expat. It is the first airplane in the history of airplanes. It doesn't require a runway and doesn't require a human pilot. It's AI piloted and it doesn't, it's vertical takeoff, launch and land. We've gone up against our F-16s um, and actual F-16s and F-16 versus F-16. Uh, uh, and this was part of the DARPA ACE program, which was uh, the, care, the next program from the DARPA Alpha Dogfight, um, where we've gone up against F-16 pilots. And yeah, we've, you know, we've, you know, AI pilot, like, it wins. Crushes right. it. Yeah. You want to talk about the expat? Yeah, I'll, I'm happy to talk about the expat. Now, yeah, now that we're talking about it. Um, all right, so expat, just some background. Um, Shield AI, when we think about hardware, like, we want to build, hardware's, you know, really effing hard to build. Um, it is because you're stuck with the design choices that you make for a long time. Software, you can quickly like iterate on the design choices that you make. There's certainly like there are challenges in architecting a good software system, but in, like same in hardware, it's just like harder to change things once you're bending steel and metal. So you have to get it right out of the gate. Um, and then hardware is just like when you're dealing in the real physical world, um, everything's harder. Sensors fail, right? Computers have challenges, right? Sensors will fail for milliseconds on like average. And like, there's just so many hard things about building hardware. So Shield AI is very deliberate about the hardware that we build. Uh, has to be absolutely transformative. For VBAT, VBAT was, hey, we're gonna transform ISR and targeting, right? Um, we need more intelligence. McChrystal, very famous for saying, intelligence drives operations. Like, if we can transform ISR and targeting with VBAT, like, that's why we decide to buy VBAT and go with it. Um, but we're not looking to build 26 different hardware products out there. Like, we are an AI and autonomy company. We build amazing aircraft. Um, and we have these great assets. We have a software engineering asset that's world-class. We have a hardware engineering asset that's world-class. And so we had to ask ourselves, okay, we've done VBAT, what's next? Um, what's the next piece of hardware that we want to build? Do we want to build a one-way attack drone? Do we want to build a, a, a USV, a maritime platform? Do we want to build um, a hypersonic missile? Um, and so after great deliberation and a great credit to um, our head of aircraft, uh, head of our aircraft business, Armour Harris, came from SpaceX, came up with this thing uh, called the XBAT. Um, and so what is XBAT? XBAT is a first of its kind, vertical takeoff, launch and land, multi-role combat strike jet you know platform um that it you know is ai piloted uh it is the first airplane in the history of airplanes that has both uh or it doesn't require a runway and doesn't require a human pilot it's ai piloted and it doesn't it's vertical takeoff launch and land um, and from that there are a massive number of benefits to the platform um, one of the big benefits, right, if I talk to uh, the geographic combatant commanders, right, these are the four stars, admirals and generals running Indo-PACOM, running UCOM, uh, that are posed with the strategic problem, how do you deter our adversaries and, if necessary, fight to defeat our adversaries, they would tell you, like, the value of XBAT comes from the ability to create a massive number of dilemmas by having geographically distributed long range fires that can be launched from anywhere uh, on the battlefield. Um, and so now, where you know, an adversary like China has to worry about these fixed runways and a couple air, you know, the United States has 11 aircraft carriers, we have to worry about you know, a couple fixed runways. Um, and uh, and these aircraft carriers now all of a sudden they have to worry about every, you know, 20 foot by 20 foot spot of earth on the planet. Um, and that is, you know, why does that matter? Now it makes basically forces them to redefine their invasion calculus. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you don't know where America's assets are, um, are especially our aerial assets, which are our number one conventional strategic deterrent, um, it's going to force you to yeah, rethink uh, your war plans. It buys diplomacy another day. Um, on the like 
other side of the coin of what I would you know tell you about like expat. Um, and this is like, again, I want to be super clear, like expat is going to augment, uh, you know, fighter pilots for, you know, quite some time. Um, but like when I look at something like the joint strike fighter, um, it is an incredible capability. Like if you actually like dig into like what that capability offers the USA, it's amazing. Um, but it requires runways. It requires hardened bunkers. Um, it requires a $10 million pilot just to get like, to be, you know, certified on flying it, right? Not, not even making them like an expert at that system, right? It's like, I could put, you know, when we became Navy SEALs, we weren't expert Navy SEALs on day one, right? $10 million to make you, you know, base, you know, just dangerous enough with the aircraft. Um, it is limited range. Um, I want to say it's around like 550 nautical mile combat radius. And so, if you want to employ joint strike fighter in the Pacific, where there are a thousand nautical mile ranges, you have to have refueling tankers. And because of the threat environment, we've built autonomous refueling tankers, right? Which is another like expensive capability. Um, you and, have built the ref. No, 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 we did. Like the, the USA has okay. built refueling tankers um, for these joint strike fighters. And then the platform itself is a hundred million dollars. So when you look at the all in total cost of capability for the joint strike fighter. Again, amazing capability. It's wildly expensive. It's probably like it estimated 200 million to $250 million per aircraft. When you look at all these add on capabilities, not to mention the total life cycle cost of it, the, you know, the hourly cost of operating at $35,000 an hour. Expat vertical takeoff, launch and land, no runways. Um, it is, you know, AI pilot, so no human pilot. Uh, it has um, a 2,100 nautical mile range with mission payload. You know, we're targeting $27.5 million per pop on it with a $6,000 per hour operating cost uh, for the aircraft. And so you're getting fifth, sixth gen capability um, at a fraction of uh, the cost. And that's something that no one else is, is doing or offering. Wow. Wow. I mean, these, the, the VBAT beat the F, F-35, correct? No, 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 no. The, no, no. So VBAT being the, the and, and now VBAT XBAT can get confusing. Uh, VBAT's the mini Reaper Predator. The XBAT in development, um, we're going to, uh, we've got a subsystem prototype that's flying in 2026, full system prototype flying in 2027, going to production in 2029. Um, the AI pilot for that aircraft, we're developing AI pilots for this next generation of uncrewed fighter jets. Um, and so we have not gone up against, um, you know, F. 35, but we've gone up against our F-16s um, and actual F-16s and F-16 versus F-16. Uh, uh, and this was part of the DARPA ACE program, which was uh, the, care, the next program from the DARPA Alpha Dogfight, um, where we've gone up against F-16 pilots. And yeah, we've, you know, we've, you know, AI pilot, like it wins. Crushes. Right? It. Yeah. So. You ready to go take a look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we've got, you know, a model out there uh, that I'm excited to show you. Uh, it's really cool. Yeah. Let's do it. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.